Hey everyone, today I'll be going over leak code 1329, uh, sort the matrix diagonally. So they have all of this description, but really exactly what they want is shown in this example right here. So they give you some matrix, and then across each diagonal, as you can see, we want to sort them. So it's that simple. You can see if we look from top left to bottom right, uh, they are sorted ascending. So there are two things, and I actually wrote these in comments, that we want to make sure we do with this solution. Uh, we want to maintain some order. So I know a perfect data structure for that. It's a min heap or a priority queue because it maintains order at all times. And then also buckets. So we could just use hash map. So I'm thinking that we could use a hash map and the key is basically going to be the diagonal however we're going to reference that. And it's going to map to a heap. Now the heap is gonna have all the numbers in that diagonal. And the reason why we use a heap is because we know it'll maintain the order. So we can just go back through this matrix, fill it up, and we know it's going to have that sorted order. So to do that, uh, let's just do exactly that. Uh, let's have a hash map. So we're gonna do that by mapping. So we wanna map an integer, which is gonna be our key. That's gonna be the diagonal. And we're gonna map it to a priority queue. So the priority queue is going to be of type uh, integer because it's just the numbers. And we're going to just name this uh, map and new hash map. So we got our hash map here. And the very first thing we want to do is we want to go through the matrix. So let's just grab the dimensions for now. So I'll go like so. And before we continue, let's make sure this matrix can't be empty. It looks like it can't, so it's fine to just grab it like this. We don't need a base case. So moving onwards, uh, let's go ahead and just iterate through the matrix. So as normal, let's go right here and let's go like that. Okay. Okay, so now once we've done that, uh, what we can actually do is, as I said, we have to figure out the keys. So at this current cell, which diagonal does it belong to? So an easy way to do that is you could just use I minus J. And a proof of that is if we actually look at this matrix right here, uh, you'll see that these are all on the same diagonal, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2. The difference between the I and J are always the same. So we can actually use I minus J as the key because we'll look, all these on the diagonal are on diagonal zero. This will be diagonal negative one, this will be diagonal negative two, this will be one, two, and three. So that's one way to actually keep these all in the same bucket. So let's do that. And it might not exist yet, so let's do get or default. So let's get the heat that this diagonal belongs to. So to do that, let's go priority queue, integer, and let's call this heap equals map.get or default because it might not exist yet, as I said. So either i minus j, and if it doesn't exist, we want to create a new one. So we'll go new priority queue. So basically what's happening here is if the bucket doesn't exist for this diagonal yet, we'll create a new priority queue. So we got that. So next we want to put this into that priority queue. So what we're going to do is we're going to offer whatever is at this current cell. And we want to also put it back in. Now the reason why we do this is because it might not have existed yet. So it'll basically create a reference to just some uh, dangling priority queue. So we actually want to put it back into the map. So let's do that. And we want to put it for this key. And either way it'll work whether it exists or not because we actually put it back in. So at the end here, we know we're gonna wanna return the matrix because it's gonna be sorted. What we do wanna do is we actually wanna go back through this matrix another time. So what do we have here? Basically what we did here is we filled up each diagonal with a priority queue. So we know they maintain their sorted order. Now we can actually, since it's sorted ascending, the very first time we come across each cell we can actually pop or uh, pull from the priority queue, and that, that's guaranteed to have the lowest number at all times. 
So for example, if we go up to this matrix up here, if we're at the top left, in this diagonal, that's the first one, and we want the smallest one, so we pull. The next time we come to this next spot in the diagonal, we want the second smallest, and we want the third smallest. So just naturally, it just works. We can just simply make the current number here basically the pulled number from that priority queue that's mapping to that diagonal bucket. So basically, it's just this. So basically, we go here, and we get uh, the bucket that's at the current diagonal, and we pull it. And that's it, because pulling is going to remove it. Uh, what's guaranteed to be the smallest number, and this is guaranteed to be ascending order. So let's go ahead and run this. And you'll see we get accepted here. Uh, let's just do a bigger test case to make sure. And it looks like it's accepted, so let's go ahead and submit this. Perfect. Okay, yeah, the runtime's a little lacking because, as I said, you might want to sort this in place. So this is a very naive solution. Uh, it's just, it's really easy and it makes really good use of a data structure that already exists, which is why I chose to do it this way. Uh, let's talk about time complexity here for a second. Uh, so a heap to insert, it's always log n, but if we're doing that n times, it's actually n log n. So it's just like sorting an array, basically. Uh, so what's going to happen here so we're iterating through the matrix and even though it's a two-dimensional loop uh, it's just a matrix so let's consider n the number of elements uh, space let's talk about space because this is an easy one uh, really we're just filling up this map with all of the numbers basically so space is going to be on where n is a number of elements total number of elements in the grid you could call it m times n or whatever uh, time is actually going to be bound to n log n. Now the reason is, is because we're iterating n times, considering this the number of elements, and we're actually making n inserts. So each insert is log n, so it's going to be n log n. Now down here, uh, removing or pulling from priority queue is also n log n. So the it's two n log n uh, iterations basically, so it's kind of like two n log n which, you know, just condenses to n log n. So space is on because we're really just filling a map with all the elements, and then time is n log n. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, this is my first video back in a while, so uh, I appreciate it, and thanks for watching.